iOS 18 is finally here and there's a lot of things that I've been testing all summer that you should try and a lot of things that you might notice are missing at launch. Apple always has a few main focuses and updates and it seems like this year those are customization, personalization, and summarization. The weird thing here is that a lot of headline features around Apple intelligence aren't slated to launch with iOS 18 until December. So we kind of need to split this up into what's launching now and then do another video in December on Apple Intelligence once it's here. So customization is big this year and there's a bunch of new ways to make your phone your own. You all knew this was coming. Probably the first thing that you're gonna do with your phone is the suite of changes coming to the home screen. Now, when you press and hold the home screen, you can select edit and you'll see a new customize button. Tap on that and you'll get all the customization options for your home screen. You can make the icons larger and completely remove the labels on the icons and widgets. You can now use dark mode icons that look really nice. Apple even automatically changes some third-party app icons where there's not a difficult background to swap out. And with those changes, you can also choose whether to dim your home screen wallpaper or not, which is subtle, but a nice touch. You can even go a little further and tint your icons, which makes them all this sort of monochrome option working on both icons and widgets. But then with the third-party icons and widgets, it applies this sort of tint over the whole thing, which looks like that. I'm sure it won't always look like this, but it's really hit or miss, and I can't see myself using this very often. In fact, I really didn't use it all summer long. But again, it's about customization, and now you can do it. And taking it a step further, you can now move icons and widgets anywhere around your screen, no longer confined to that left to right aspect that we've known for years on iPhone. The most I've generally done is left some blank space between the icons and the widgets on my home screen, but the sky's the limit with this one and it's up to you. So you have your home screen now uniquely customized to your liking. Then you get a redesigned control center where you can swipe down to see all controls. But then as you keep swiping without letting go, you can shift through pages from favorites, media controls, home controls, and connectivity. And then just like on the home screen, you can press and hold to edit these pages. You can resize current buttons. You can also add new actions with this new controls gallery, which includes in-app actions and also third-party app actions, which is really nice to have. You can add more pages with additional controls if the standard pages aren't enough for you. And all of these custom actions can also be used to swap with the controls on your lock screen for quick access to, you know, something other than camera and flashlight. Plus, you can also use the same controls gallery for the action button for even more customization. You see where this is going. In a lot of ways, your phone just became more convenient, and it's really the first time your iPhone can look and feel completely different than somebody else's iPhone. But that brings us to the next category, personalization. Apple has always been a bit of a walled garden. I think that that's fair to say. Even if other phones get great new features, Apple doesn't always let us have those. Until iOS 18, where it seems like they just said, here, have it all. First, that starts with the ability to not just remove an app from the home screen, but now you can lock it requiring Face ID access. Take it a step further and you can actually hide it, which puts it in a locked down hidden section in the app library. It's not revolutionary, but something that's been available on other older phones for a long time now, and it is a way to personalize your experience. So then you get the personalization in messages. We now have RCS, which means when texting a modern Android device, you get typing indicators, you get red receipts, you get super clear images when sending to and from Android, and that all looks great. But then yes, you are still getting green bubbles that you're used to, and that's not going anywhere anytime soon. But then messaging iPhone users got some healthy upgrades too, like the ability to schedule a message for later, and those messages are also getting an upgrade too, like the ability to bold, italicize, underline, and strike out text, and then provide further emphasis with animations for individual words, which can lead to a really annoying looking message if you really want it to. The Photos app is getting a healthy dose of personalization with a complete redesign. And it's gone through a fair amount of changes throughout the betas and throughout the summer, but what Apple landed on now is, I don't wanna say difficult, there's a learning curve. So you start out on a top section here that's just a grid of all of your photos. If you swipe into that, you get your filters and your toggles by recency, and that's all fairly normal. But then if you swipe down the other way, now you get into this new area designed to help you relive moments. It'll group photos by recent days without you putting them into an album. It'll group people into their own albums or groups of people now without you doing anything. It'll generate more memories or trips. 
and everything you see here can be added to the list or hidden, it can be dragged and reorganized. So once you go through the customization, this is a really awesome app and I don't want to downplay that. But immediately out of the box, this is going to feel very overwhelming for most people. And if you're not going to put the work in, you're probably going to end up hating this app. It's like for years, Apple was saying, we know exactly the right layout and we're going to force you to have this. But now it's sort of like, we're going to give you all the options and you can make it how you like it. And while that's a great trend that should carry forward, I think the starting point should be a little easier for the basic user than what the Photos app is now. There's a bunch more personalization being added throughout iOS 18, but most of it is centered around Apple intelligence, which I'll cover later this year when it officially launches. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. But long story short, I actually feel like that's a great segue into summarization. So it seems like all tech these days is trying to make things simpler, more glanceable, and that's spread out across iOS 18. Safari now has an updated reader view that can provide a summary with Apple intelligence. It can give you a table of contents for an all around more glanceable reader view. Passwords is now getting its own app, making it much easier than ever to find without it being buried in the settings app. And that's gonna show up across iOS, iPadOS, and macOS, which is gonna solve a lot of headaches for a lot of people. And then Apple TV app is also getting a new insights section that gives you more details on what you're watching, which is a really nice touch for quick info. It seems like this year had a lot of minor refinements, but it laid the groundwork for Apple intelligence features. Let me know in the comments if you are actually excited for all of those new features or not. And do you have a new feature that you're really excited about that I didn't mention in this video? Let me know that in the comments as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.